what's going on it's your boy nick moses 05 super excited man i got somebody here a lot of you may already know who this is okay but if you don't know please introduce yourself uh what's up my name is dave dave ashray i uh, run new blood interactive we make games uh these ones dusk of medieval faith ultra kill gloomwood fallen aces some others i probably forgot uh a medieval did i say a medieval a medieval vr coming out in like two days uh yeah i do that pretty much nah. all the time when i'm not shit posting on twitter hey <laughs> you know those games i'm not going i'm not going to undersell that okay dusk faith fallen aces super galaxy squadron gloomwood dusk yeah. ultra yeah. kill midi yeah all yeah, of them. i did That's say it twice yeah i did i know yeah. <laughs> it's okay well with dusk 82 <laughs> that also counts <laughs> Okay, so once on yeah, once and then what's on switch. Yeah, we we gonna start with something simple. The simple stuff, you know, and then we'll move on to the games. I'm sure everybody wants to know about the games. But we'll start with you, Dave. Uh tell us a little about yourself. Born and raised. Let, let's know a little bit about yourself and your sure, heart. born and raised in New York City. Uh born in New York City, grew up on Long Island, uh eventually moved out to California to chase the video game dream made it happen lived in san diego for about 10 years moved down to new zealand four years ago uh then uh, a little thing happened called the pandemic got stuck down here uh now i live down here permanently i'm a permanent resident working towards dual citizenship uh between two countries which is nice i live way the far the fuck down south mm -hmm. of New Zealand, seeing the penguins down here uh no need to leave anytime soon don't miss the states too much um but yeah started um you know started blogging about games in about like 08 09 when i back when i was playing like world of warcraft and selling used cars uh okay. you know finished up my marketing degree uh from hofstra university um applied that to video games got in with some indie devs trying to do some duke nukem stuff next thing you know we were doing rise of the triad um that was a game it came out we did it um Dude. started new blood with my friends in like 2014 really didn't take off till like 2016 2017 when we did super galaxy squadron then dusk we announced dusk and uh the rest is history kind of since dusk finally came out in 2018 2019 a medieval 2020 ultra kill 2021 gloomwood 2022 faith mm -hmm. 2023 fallen aces um and in between you know a lot of ports a lot of other stuff um made a lot of fans made a lot of friends uh not stopping anytime soon rockstar life man i love it i'm here i just like man that is the the dream so with new blood you mentioned founded um how was it founded can you tell us about it was that just something that you was like yo you know what well hey, me, me and my go. friends Aaron and Craig were coming off of working on Rise of the Triad with some people. We wanted to kind of like do our own stuff and originally we wanted to make a VR game, which is funny because we're finally coming out with a VR game like 10 years later. Um, and we were working on like the original Oculus, you know, and I don't know, we were just, we wanted to do our own thing. We didn't want to work for anybody else, with anybody else, having to wait for other people to do shit, having to deal with people who like didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Um, and so we're like, we'll start our own game studio <laughs> blackjack and hookers um and yeah we just we want to do our own thing um and now we are you know it took a while to get going but you know all right so what was the most difficult process in that right because you're right you like you said coming off rise of the triads you know you you could have probably you know stayed where you were yeah, they offered me to work on this other next game was supposed to be a Duke Nukem game. It ended up being Bombshell, which was a huge flop for that company. Mm -hmm. uh, but originally it was supposed to be like a Duke Nukem game and Fred and those guys at Intercept, they're, they're 3D Realms now, right? They're the new 3D Realms. Nice. They bought the 3D Realms. Um, they offered me to stay on and be the marketing guy for the, the game they were working on, the Duke Nukem Mass Destruction, which ended up being Bombshell. And I was just like, no. <laughs> I don't want to work I know you look Duke back Nukem. and think this that was like a good around game. the time Duke Nukem Forever was coming out. It was like not an IP you wanted to work with. Like the legal situation was iffy. Yeah. Uh, it's just right. I was I didn't want to work with other people anymore. I wanted to work with my friends and do our own thing. Um, oh, that's so yeah. good, man. And, and it's funny you mentioned Duke Nukem Forever. It's <laughs> sight. I'm gonna say this. I ain't telling him. I'm gonna put it out there. I actually loved that game, man. It's I okay. loved it. 
I loved it's it. Okay. I, 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 I was you laughing. Could, and you could, playing. you know, you did some patches and stuff you could do now, some mods. Exactly. It's, it's, you know, it's fun. There's there there yeah, parts yeah. of it that were good. I mean, if that game would have come out like when it originally I know, right? supposed to come out, it would have been great. But it came out 10 years too late, you know? Yeah, so um, with the guys coming together, what did you find your biggest challenge with that was? Because I know that's like, you may have already had connections and things in the industry, but what do you think like, because now I'm sure there was new things you had to learn as well doing that, right? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was trying to figure out like who we were and what we really wanted to do. Because like we started trying to develop games, but that didn't really take off. And then we kind of turned into like a little indie publisher with stuff like Super Galaxy Squadron and some other games trying to like see are we like, are we like a developer? Are we a publisher? Um, so it, it really took like, I don't know, I was, was it 2014? Yeah, like four or five years till we kind of hit our stride to figure out what the hell exactly what we were and what we were trying to do. You know, it wasn't really till, you know, Dusk and a Medieval came out. We had, you know, a bunch of people within, you know, the company, you know, our internal QA team, internal dev support, a bunch of devs who can work across all projects until we realized like we're not, you know, we're not a developer. We're not a publisher of other people's games. We kind of just do everything ourselves, you know, it's, and we've gotten to the point where we do our own development, our own publishing, our own QA, our own porting, our own marketing, our own PR. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need anybody or anything, but it, it's not like it was we planned on that. I didn't I didn't have some master plan. We were just kind of figuring shit out as it went along and doing what worked. Um, I think the most important thing is just making sure you're working with your friends and people you enjoy working with and that you can get stuff done with, you know, um, not trying to chase chase different bags or, you know, trends. Um, just making sure you're having a good time making games with people and putting out good games and the rest kind of falls into place. You know, people ask me like, it's not, there's no like, there's no, you know, there's no blueprint I can put down to be like, this is how you make a new <laughs> yeah, right. style company. It just happened over the last 10 years. Um, I think the trick is to just follow what works, you know, and if, and most, most important thing is the people, because there were times when we would chase projects instead of people and the people on those projects wouldn't vibe with us. And it just, those, those are the games that didn't work out. And it was it was clear that like we had to go after the the people first, people we wanted to work with, our friends, people we knew we could have a good time with that we got along well with, and it's it's worked out. So, you know, if anybody asks like what's the way to make a, a good game studio, it's, it's people first. You know, like you get you gotta fit, you gotta have fun. It's gotta be. I I I know so many game studios where it's just like drama. It's like high school, and it's just like nothing. And you like, why does nothing ever get done? Why are the games bad? It's because people don't like working together. Every day they come to work, and it's just like this person at this desk doesn't like that person at that desk. There's like seven layers of management, and it's just it's not fun. It's video games. It should be fun. Yeah, and speaking on that, you know, within the recent, especially during like I mentioned the pandemic, it's been a lot of developers coming out complaining about you know all oh, my work standards or maybe the different workplaces things like that do you think that it is a lot of what you're saying you know where they're not they're typically working you're not working around friends you're working for another company where you don't know the next person next to you, your job is your job and you go home and it doesn't have yeah, that it's a lot of punch especially at triple a studios you know it's clock in clock out it's a job ass job um, I think, you know, during the pandemic, what we saw was a lot of people trying to get used to working remote and figuring that out when we had already figured that out like a few years ago, which is why during the pandemic, we put out like five games, you know, the pandemic was like very good because <laughs> right? while everybody was still trying to figure out how to, you know, work during a pandemic, we were already, a, we don't have an office, you know, we're, yeah. a, we're a remote company. We're completely, we thought about getting an office, but like, we're all, we're spread out too far and we don't need one. Like if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. What do we need an office for? Just a place to have lunch? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I think a lot of people realize they really don't need an office. They don't like being in an office. They actually work better from home. Um, you know, the kind of the same way, uh, you know, we've realized we don't really need shit like E3 anymore. Like, I can just wake up in my underwear and watch Nintendo Direct and Xbox Direct and, you know, Sony State of Play and like, cool, I know what games are coming out. I don't need a big show where all the booths cost a million dollars. Like it was cool, but like it was a time and a place, right? Preach. E I, I, like, I went to E3 like mm. during its heyday and it was, it was beautiful, it was amazing, you know? It was like, oh my God, look at all this, and walking out and playing all the new games. It was awesome, it was really cool. Um, and then like afterwards there would be concerts, you know? And it's just like, it was, 
but that was a real like 2011 energy yeah. you know that's not yeah. the world we're in anymore so i think the same for working with offices especially if you're an indie studio man if you're mm -hmm. like if the first thing you're like all right we got to get a bunch of money and we got to get an office and like all this and then no you don't you need all you need you need a repo you know you need you know you need a, you need like a place to do your bugs in place mm -hmm. to do your development stuff and a place to communicate you need like jira discord slack you know yeah. that's Mm. You know, <laughs> man you preaching right Trello, now, man. that's that's all you need to run a game studio um you know that's you, you don't need a big office with a, you know with a bunch of bills to pay that is absolutely not the way to get games made man nice so um i noticed a lot of the games from new blood seem to have a retro style to it can you speak more on that direction why um and and right now it does seem like you know now it's where it's at you do see a lot of new games coming out using a lot of these older retro mechanics and even twisting little things making it better we're realizing like oh man we can make these things even better where did that come in for new blood um I, these are just the kind of games that we love playing growing up so like we're trying to recreate those experiences that we had as kids you know we love games like you know doom and quake and duke nukem and stuff like that and then getting into stuff like gloomwood and fallen aces we love games like thief and resident evil so we're just kind of trying to replicate those feelings that we had as a kid with these types of games like it's not like we're doing retro because you know oh retro shit's hot right now we're those are the, that's we're, we make the kind of games we do because nobody else is and we, we make stuff we want to play people ask me what games i play i'm like i mostly play our games like i that's why we make these games so we have something to play like i don't want to play a lot of the stuff that's out there i mean there's a ton of stuff out there that i love to play but like we new blood games are new blood games because people weren't making new blood games you know uh, all we had was you know the old games are still there you know you can play doom and quake till the end of time there's a million mods and stuff like that but like we want new experiences based on those old principles and those old design aesthetics and it's just like other people do too it turns out Great. so you know and, and we built the business off that like you know if people say why do these games look like they're made in 2000 we're like that's the point yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to look like that like it's supposed to give you that feeling gloomwood is supposed to look like you know a sequel to the original thief games it's, you know it's supposed to have that dark engine look to it you know um you know Preach. dusk is supposed to look you know like a quake style game the medieval is supposed to look like a modern take on heretic you know um yeah, and it's fun for us it's not easy you know making retro games it's not like you go into unity and you're like bad graphics yeah. button <laughs> fast gameplay button <laughs> Boom, from we made a new blood game like it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work that you know it the stuff we do is very purposeful and it takes it's you know it's it's about as hard to make new engines i was talking about this on a panel of packs like it's just about as hard to make new game engines make stuff look old and shitty as it is for old shitty game engines to make stuff look new and shiny like it's a it it it's a lot of effort goes into making this stuff. Man, killing it, man. So, Medieval, let's yeah. talk about it. Um, You have a game being released yes. two days on my birthday. Yes. VR I to go, I, I'm supposed to be testing it right now. I got the fucking, hey, I, got uh, I got Oculuses coming out of my Oculuses. <laughs> Yo, I, I have... West 2, uh, Oculus, you know, Meta, whatever you want to call it now, right? Yeah, I still uh, call I got... it Oculus. I'm not <laughs> yeah, I do it. too. I, I, even, I, I tell the people at Meta, I'm like, I'm still calling it Oculus. Oculus. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't find a gun. But I, I got an Oculus there, and um, I I couldn't. When I heard about this, I reached out to you, man. I said, yo, you on did. my birthday, man, what the, what, how, what is the queen? birthday's uh, on 420? That's crazy well, enough. Yeah, I, and yeah, <laughs> man, stone, stoner life, right? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's a rock star life. I can't lie about it. But um, I played a lot of VR games, and um, I want to talk about some of those VR things. You've been in, uh, you know, playing it, I'm sure. And what about, you know, a lot of people complain about motion sickness in VR, man. And I played VR for a bit, and I explained to a lot of people, you know, especially the starters, right, who have never yeah. played VR, what they might experience. Mm -hmm. How has the development been, and what have you put in there to kind of curve any type of motion sickness or things yeah. that people may be worried about going into it, being a, you know, first-person shooter? 
Yeah, so I think the the thing that's that's happened over the last few years is it's not really as much of a thing anymore. Like, if there is motion sickness, you'll only get that at the beginning. It's like being on a boat, right? You know, you just got to get used to it a little bit. You got to get your sea leg. Um, and, you know, there's a ton of comfort options in a medieval. Like, for the people who, like, don't want the free movement yet, you can still do the teleport and snap turn and stuff like that. But we've got complete free movement. But what I found, because like when I started testing, it had been a while since I'd done, v, you know, done VR. And when I put on the quest and I'd start doing free movement, I'd get sick. I can only play like a level at a time. Then I got used to it. After a few hours, I got used to it. And now I'm pretty much fine. I do I do free movement with left hand and then snap turn with my right. I don't do the, I don't do the free turn and then, and then head movement. Um, you know, what I would say is now that, you know, the headsets are better, there's a lot less of the motion sickness like i remember when it was like the original oculus a little boxy dk1 you put that thing on and they had like one of the demos was like a roller coaster and it was like, you'd have to take it off because you literally have to vomit um it's not like that anymore and i think the the fact that people are still worried about that it's like it's not a it's we brought it to pax right a few weeks ago and i was like we're gonna have to have a puke bucket or something right <laughs> nobody got motion sick everybody beat the level everybody liked it i'm like are people i think people are just used to this now i think with the fidelity of stuff the quest 2 is the most popular headset it right is. it is meta facebook oculus totally they killed it right they yeah. they they, they knew that people wanted all it would take is no wires right yeah no that's wires it. That's, that's that's all literally it it. that's what th that's this what's is your, it. It, like that's if i got it. this for if i wasn't in the game industry or whatever and i got this as like a birthday present or like or whatever I'd i got like, mine as a birthday present it was great yeah this is sick i would be like thank you this is so sick i will actually the quest is the only one i've actually used because i don't need to have it hooked up to my pc i can just keep it in the living room like Thanks. resident evil 4 came out i was like i'll try that yep. and this is the whole thing right here is it as comfortable as like the old rift you know the rift s and stuff yeah, no because it's heavier because yep. it's all in the thing but like no wires don't need a pc it's only like three four hundred bucks yep. you're good nice. um and the fidelity on it's good enough where that's if that's like i think that's like 40 percent of the market right yeah, it, is. Two. it um, is so if that's the standard and people are using that and not getting sick then that's where we're at now it's not a thing anymore so going yeah. forward like the quest 3 is coming out um valve's working on a new whatever it is i imagine it won't have wires because there's no yeah, cause with the valve the, the, the so index too. is really nice but like i don't have an index and i can't be fucked with the base stations and yeah, the, I'm not yeah, doing no, that. Man. that's like 2014 shit i'm not i'm, I'm over it like <laughs> i'm with you is, on that. I'm this, over is, that too. this is the baseline now it has to be at least better than this um like i've got the rift s out here just to, just for testing right just to test because yeah, this is still like 10 percent or whatever plus it's comfier it is you know but it's got this like when i'm playing this i is know and that's in your way when you turn all and all that time. it happens to me all the time yeah and tiktok uh, i think I mean, is coming out with a headset too i think it was it tiktok or someone else is coming everybody's out coming out like and right. psvr2 is PSVR2. Good, PSVR2. but it's still one wire so like but it's yeah. it's I think the next generation, we're still not there yet, right? When people ask me, we're oh, not, it's no, not even close. Like I've right. said, like VR, I'll play VR when it's like glasses, gloves, and like gloves. socks or something. When it's yeah. literally just like some, because I don't, I don't want to put some shit on my head. Like I, exactly. I'm, like, I'm doing you're not, it now. You're, 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 the game. you're right. <laughs> like it's fun. I'll do it for a few hours at a time. But like, if I have the choice, I'm just playing the regular game. But so, there's a, there's still a big market there. People, you know, it is niche, but there's like, I don't know, they've, they've sold more of these than like they've sold PS5s or something like that. There's true. like, there's a ton of them yeah. out there. It's a, it's a big market. Um, so like if I'm, so if that, like I'm saying to answer your question, if that's the standard, then I think the motion sickness question is kind of like not even a question anymore. And if you're, and if that's the thing, you'll get used to it after a few hours. But with a medieval, we put all the comfort, comfort options in there anyway. So nice. like you still got teleport, you still got tap turn, snap turn. You've got the tunnel vision if you want it. So okay. when you move, you get the tunnel comfort tunnel. I think they call it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can you can play even though medieval is like a fast paced game and you got these yeah. giant levels and enemies coming at you. It's comfortable. I'm I'm I was surprised at how like everybody who's played it said yeah, it's good. I was like really? You don't gotta change anything. Nobody's vomiting. <laughs> no, it's good. So like. If they're happy, I'm happy. Dang. So how is the transition to bring it over to the quest? Is that transition? Because I'm sure you're, you're running to different things, but 
was it a real difficult process or was that something that was the game recent? translates really well most because it's mostly because it's a melee game okay. um you know so that actually transitioned really well because visually it looks great because it's you know it's unreal and it's just being in these worlds is crazy the biggest thing for the quest was performance um we had to you know cull a lot of stuff turn a lot of the settings down on pcvr it looks like way way better but on it looks good on quest um the biggest thing i think was performance getting the weapons to feel right we had to remake all the weapons in 3d because the weapons in the original game were flat 2d sprites um so we had to recreate them and now they're 3d and you can actually look around them and look around, at the crystals yeah, and touch right. them we made it so you can use two hands on them um like the ba baseline bringing it over actually wasn't that bad it's been all the little things that we've added since then you know obviously all the haptics you know doing yeah. stuff in vr which buttons do what um you know tuning it so like the bosses and the enemies you know play a bit differently but for the most part it's the whole game there's no we didn't you know we didn't scale anything back it's not it's it is all over medieval it's the entire 12 hour game just in <laughs> vr which is and it lends itself really well because you've got these big levels like we put all the cheats you could just like wander around and you know look at everything yeah like, at that's games. how it's, i am <laughs> um and people are like is it's it's too fast for vr it's like no, it's easier in VR because then, you know, when you're playing with a mouse and keyboard, you've got to aim right. and deal with input and all that stuff. And with VR, you just be like, roll right to it. Yeah, I agree. And then, you know, and they're all dead. Like, it's actually it's actually easier in VR um, than, you know, with mouse and keyboard or with controllers. So, um, yeah, it, 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 uh -huh. it came over pretty well. You know, Andre nice. and Noah, the guys working on it, they did a really good job. I would say the biggest thing was performance, but like we, Dude. the game already performed really well. Like the the original game, we we got that running on like tablets and stuff. So it's um, oh, that's good. It's been that's it's real good. so far so good. Nice. We'll so we yeah, we'll, we'll see now. <laughs> how much is the game going to be? Palm release. Uh, twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. So twenty nice. bucks. Same as the original game. So the original game is twenty bucks. This game will be twenty bucks. But we're making a bundle. So if you already own a medieval, you get a medieval VR fifty percent off. So ten bucks. Mm, nice and i'll make sure under this i have all the links and everything description yeah because i mean we reckon like people are like oh that's too cheap i'm like but if you already own one game and you're gonna play the whole damn game again but in vr like you, if, like I, I like to reward people like you bought the game congrats you get the second one half off <laughs> we can't do that on the quest store though they won't let me i emailed meta i'm like can we do wow. this now like, no. i'm like okay yeah, they got um, that so the better deals on steam yeah. um, <laughs> right uh yeah but it'll be 20 bucks because it's not just like a port like we had to rebuild the whole game it took like yeah. two years um Dang. but even I, I wish it was i wish we made a medieval 30 bucks, man. We, we made our games too cheap a few years ago, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's too late I, now, I right? should reprice them be like, inflation, sorry. Um, but yeah, so the base game, and the medieval is going to be on sale, too, so like, you can get, you're going to be able to get a medieval for 5 bucks, and then if you own it, you'll be able to get a medieval VR for 10 bucks. You'll be able to get both Damn. games for like 15 bucks. So we're going to be making like $2 a copy, so basically. <laughs> so like, better grab it. Everybody yeah, better run and grab it right now. I mean, it. honestly, at this point, because we've been successful, like I just want people to play the games. Like I don't That's care. Nice. We're not. I don't care if we make tons of money. We make enough money, right? Um, I just want people to like our shit. So like, if if you own a medieval, I want you to try a medieval VR. If you have VR but you don't play games like ours, I want you to try a medieval VR to see maybe it'll be a gateway drug to faster paced shooters like we play and then maybe we'll play dusk and ultra kill and get into our games and if it goes well we'll do dusk vr and ultra kill vr um nice. it's it's weird because like i said we started out trying to do vr games in like 2014 back we, we were like <laughs> really know, right? early like e valkyrie days weird. like really early and then it's like we did i everybody stopped giving a shit about vr and i like i was sick of it for like 10 years and now vr is kind of having a moment again it is. you know with the quest and i think the next generation is going to be pretty cool i haven't seen like the quest 3 or whatever valve's working on or yeah. all these other headsets but i think like if the if this if the quest 2 is at this level that's really popular and people really like it whatever the 3 is going to be i mean they got infinite money over at zuckerberg yeah, land, like, so it, i assume it's going to be pretty nice i'm excited i, I think so um, too so and i think it'll keep i think we will get to that point when it's like really lightweight you know we just glasses yeah, and glass stuff yeah, like that um like the index is nice but like the visual fidelity and the knuckle is not worth all the plugging and the yeah that's a lot of headache i don't have enough outlets in my office <laughs> yeah, to yeah, do that go, shit boom, anymore boom, dude. Boom. yeah it, it is a lot man so let me ask dave what is the weirdest bug 
you've seen during development. I'm sure you have seen a lot. Unless, though, you know what? Let's do a medieval. Let's do medieval, mm -hmm. right? What was the weirdest bug. bug that you've seen on there? I'm sure you've seen a lot. Uh, in a medieval, I don't know, man. We didn't, we didn't get a lot. I'm trying uh, to think. Well, well anyone, anyway, if you could think of any game where you just said, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's going to take me a minute to think about. Um, that's a good question. Weirdest bug that I turned into in one of I know, our games. And you know, I asked it because I know so many, you know, you're going through the development process, right? You go, oh, shit, I did this. Oh, let me fix it. Okay. Oh, shit, I did this. Oh, well, I, well, back when we were doing Rise of the Triad, we had tons of bugs because that game was a mess. And we had one where <laughs> yeah. you switched your weapons fast enough, a third arm would come out and it would get stuck there. So you'd have your two guns here and then an arm like out the middle here. And it looked, it was looked so stupid, but I was like, yo, that should be a power up. That's hilarious. Yeah, that would like, be nice. It should be three like three arm <laughs> mode. <laughs> so the problem, what was happening was the anim, if you switch too fast, the animations would get stuck on screen and then like the model would just get stuck here ah, and you'd still be able to keep okay. doing this, but that would just be stuck there. And that was hilarious. I, if we could ever go back and fix that game, which I don't think we can, uh, I'd love to make that a power up. Um, I mean, there's a ton. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, but our QA guys are really good, so we don't, you know, we fix, <laughs> yeah, we fix anything that pops up. But as far as any silly stuff, I don't know. Well, I'm, at good, loss. Man. I'm at a loss. Now, Final games don't have bugs. They're perfect. There, there you go. And if I got the sound, the you know, the soundboard. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, I wanted to only hold you up for 30 minutes. You're a busy man. Right, you yes. got a lot to do, right? And I, I know how your time is, and I appreciate you even spending this 30 minutes, you know, coming on with me. Is there anything that <laughs> you would like to uh, say um, about, you know, the release or any of your other games or the moment, the floor is yours. I want you to take this moment to, bam, get it all out. Ah, uh, nothing, man. You know, I just, I just love that people love our games and they're excited and that we're finding new ways to bring our games to new audiences with stuff like AEVR. You know, I'm only doing it because a guy named Andre bugged me for two years. He's like, brother, I want to, I want to put your games in VR. Shout out to Andre. Care about VR, and he's like, I want to do it anyway. I was like, fine, go ahead. And two years later, we're like good friends and we're making the game happen and releasing it. Um, but that's kind of like the thing about New Blood, right? It's you know, uh, it's about people. You know, I. Uh, you know, I make games with my friends and I live by the beach and that's all I ever want to do, right? I don't got any yeah, big dreams. Like I don't life. want to have a big office in, you know, in LA and have a hundred people and be on stage at E3 or any of that. Right. Uh, I'm good. You know, life's about knowing when to get off the ladder. You climb yeah. high enough and you go, I'm good here. Victory, I won. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and then, you know, we're... We love doing what we're doing. You know, developers are happy. I'm happy. Our players are happy. We're making fun shit. Um, you know, we're doing well, so I can't complain. No, we like to say we love you and we hate money. And that's yeah. why Medieval VR is going to be 50% off. Uh, nice. If you own a copy of a Medieval VR, yeah, man, that's it. I got, I, I don't know. I got nothing to say. I got, I got work to do. I'm going to keep on doing it. Man. And one day I'm going to retire and I'm going to fish. <laughs> hey, I'm man. Gonna I'm going to do that for 40 years and I'm going to die. And on my gravestone, it'll say, there's a guy. He played video games, caught yeah, right. a lot of fish. He moved he to died. New Zealand, never came back. <laughs> yeah, basically. Nah, you know what? That's uh, exciting to hear. I got my passport. I, I plan on doing a lot of traveling. And New Zealand is one of those. Come areas. this way, man. Come and on I, down this way. I'll show you around. And, and it's wonderful to finally speak with the first person from New Zealand to actually speak with him. So, no, nah, man, I, I definitely will be at that part of the country. And when I am, you know, I, I will touch base with you. But... Dave, man, I, I sincerely appreciate it. I'm going to put this up immediately. Everybody that's tuning in, I'm going to have links down below. Please, for me. Okay. Let's let's go ahead and cop this, man. I'm going to be playing on my birthday. I told you I'm going to be live. So you know I'm going to be live on April 20th, 420 Stoner Day. Okay. Might not be the best time to be, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, walking around with the quest and I can still. <laughs> I actually, I thought about it. I was going to like see if I could find someone who wants to get like baked as fuck on Twitch and play the game like for 24 hours or something like that. But I don't even know if that's legal. I don't know if Twitch, yeah, I don't know if Twitch lets you do that. Yeah, just if I could just sit like this in the chair. To... <laughs> Evan will wake uh. him up. 
Yo, you funny, man. That's the man. last thing I want to do, dude, if I'm fucked up, is play VR I agree. Games. That's the last thing I want to do, It's the last so thing. It's I'm going to go live early and play, do? yeah. And just if people think, oh, it's like, oh, I'm going like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do some shrooms and stuff, and I'm going to go into VR. No, you're not. You're going to go outside and look at a puddle for four hours. Yep, and that's way better. <laughs> you feel a lot better afterwards. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Dave, man, and I appreciate it. Uh, you enjoy your day, man. And, you, you know, too, if, hopefully we can do this again sometime. All right. Take care, Nick. Thanks for calling. Take it easy.